Have you ever had a mason jar that you put a smoothie or salad into break in your backpack? Um, I'm Liz from No Trace and that has happened to me, leaving a huge old mess. Um, so I've designed a little bag that holds your mason jar. It's got some padding in it and it protects it from getting uh, banged around in your backpack or your purse. Now the measurements in this video are perfect for a two cup wide mouth or narrow mouth mason jar. It fits right inside. If you wanted to adapt it for a larger four cup mason jar, you could just add on a few inches to the um, height measurement for this bag. This little bag is a really great way to use up scraps of fabric. It sews up super fast and I think you're gonna wanna make a ton of these. So let's go. In order to make your mason jar bag, you're gonna need four panels of fabric, two that will be the outside of the bag, and two that will be the inside of the bag, and all of these panels should measure seven and a half inches wide and six and a half inches tall. So I've already cut out all four panels. You're also gonna want two pieces of cotton batting um, that are the same measurements. So seven inches wide and six and a half inches tall. And um, I like cotton batting because it's gonna give a little extra protection to your mason jar. So if it gets banged around a little bit in your bag, in your lunch bag or your backpack, this batting will give it some extra um, protection. And then you're also gonna need a long strip of fabric that's about three inches wide and um, 12 inches long, or three inches tall, I should say, and 12 inches long. And you'll need a ribbon or, um, you know, some kind of cording that's about 16 inches long to do the little drawstring part. Now the first step is to start with two of your panels and put them right sides together and put your batting on the back. So you've got these two fabrics right sides together and then the batting is right here on the back. And then just go ahead and put a few pins. I think three pins is probably enough. And join those, join all these layers together. Just like that. And what we're gonna do next is stitch with a half inch seam allowance all the way around the three sides. And do a little back stitch at the beginning and the end of your line of stitches. So once, you, once you've sewn up the three sides, um, you can trim any unevenness. So you can see that I have a bit of unevenness right here. So go ahead and trim those sides down just so that they are even with each other. Um, and then you can set these, this little piece aside and you're gonna repeat the same steps with your other two pieces of fabric. So you wanna put them with the right sides together, pretty sides together, and then a piece of cotton batting on the back. And then again, we're gonna add just a few pins here and here. And you could sew this without any pins. I find that when I'm working with cotton batting, it can be helpful to pin it in place just because it's a little bit of material, you know, it's a little bulky to work with. And then again, just stitch down the three sides with a half inch seam allowance, doing a back stitch at the start and the stop. Okay, so these three sides or three pieces are joined up now. Um, and the top end is open still. And again, I'm gonna trim off some of the excess batting um, just so that the sides line up nicely with each other. Okay, in this next step, we're gonna box up the corners of this bag, but we're gonna do it in a really different way that you've probably never done before. 
Um, and one of the reasons is that I, when I make box corners, I'm left with a square of fabric that I don't always have. I save it and I do, I do repurpose it, but I don't always have a purpose for it right away. So I love to avoid creating that textile waste. But the other reason is that it, when you box your corners in this sort of creative way, you um, will give the sides, side bottoms of your jar some extra reinforcement so that it's less likely, um, it's got more protection. So it's a little less likely to break when it bumps up against something else. The way that you're gonna box the corner is that first you want to just do a finger press to open up these seams on the bottom and on the side. So just with your fingers kind of press those seams open a bit. And then you want to get your hand inside between the layers of fabric and sort of spread out that corner and make sure your seams have been pressed open with your fingers and make sure that the fabric on the inside is laying nice and flat so you can kind of feel around in there and make sure it's laying flat. And then what you want to do is measure from the end of your stitches right there measure an inch and mark that okay so making sure that your seam is open and it's laying pretty nicely nice and flat on both sides just put your point down and measure one inch from where the stitches end and just use a tailor's chalk or a pen and just put a little mark right there at one inch. It's kind of hard to see blue on blue. Okay, so that is one inch from the end of the stitches and you're gonna fold it right on the one inch line. Again, making sure that your seam is pressed open on the, on the side and on the bottom. And then you're just gonna stitch straight across this folded up corner, very close to the edge. So with like a 1 8 inch seam allowance, just stitch this corner so that it's pointing up onto the side of your pouch. And you could pin it, but I don't think you really need to. But you do wanna make sure that you don't have any wrinkles on the inside of your pouch. And you want to make sure again that your seam is open and laying flat okay so then we just put it under our presser foot and do a little back stitch at the start and the stop and just go straight across and again a back stitch at the end and then and then you can check that you caught your corner in that little row of stitches. So now you have this little um, extra piece of fabric, but like I said, this is gonna be a nice little buffer for your mason jar or for whatever you're carrying in your pouch. So I'm gonna leave that. Now you could decide to cut that if it really bothered you, but I think it's a nice way to give extra protection. So after you've done this corner, you're gonna repeat all those steps on the other corner. So again, you're going to be opening up these seams and just sort of pressing them open with your finger. Also on the bottom, press that open. Okay. And get your hand inside the pouch and make sure you don't have any wrinkles and make sure that the seam is laying nicely. And then we're gonna measure from this tip back one inch and we're gonna draw a line that's one inch back. So I like to start from the center and move my way out. Okay, so I've drawn a line that is one inch from this edge where the stitches end, okay? Now I'm gonna fold my pouch right on that line. And again, making sure that the seam is is laying is has been pressed open it's laying flat on the bottom and on the side and then double check the inside of your pouch that you don't have any wrinkles or puckers and once you're confident 
take it to your machine and we're gonna stitch straight across again with an eighth of an inch seam allowance doing a back stitch here and here. And make sure that you're not stitching, you're not sewing up any wrinkles so you can check your pouch as you're working. And make sure everything is still laying flat the way you want it. Okay. Okay, so now that little corner is also sewn in place and you can kind of, you can totally see that the, sh the pouch is taking shape now. So it's got a pretty flat bottom. It's gonna stand up pretty well on its own, especially when we get the other layer joined up with it. So you can set this pouch aside for now and just repeat those steps with the other two layers of fabric and cotton batting. So again, we just press open those seams with our fingers, just like that on the side and on the bottom and then measure and fold and sew. All right, so I've completed those steps on the other layers of fabric and batting. And now I wanna check my work. So flip your pouches right side out and make sure that your bottom corners look nice and tidy, that you didn't end up with a pucker. I mean, if you did have a pucker, you could just leave it. Um, you don't have to be so perfectionist like that. But just check your bottoms, make sure they look pretty good. And these do, so we're ready for the next step. The next step is to prep the long strip of fabric which is gonna hold your drawstring in place. And what you wanna do is fold over the edge, the raw edge, the raw short edge, about one quarter of an inch, and then again, one quarter of an inch, and just finger press. You could use your iron, um, but I, for this tiny of a, of a spot, I think it's fine just to finger press and then you want to stitch straight down to lock that fold in place and you can do a little back stitch okay so just you're sort of cap capturing that fold and making a nice little hem, and then repeat those steps on the other raw edge. So fold it about a quarter of an inch, and then again, another quarter of an inch, and press it with your fingers, or the iron if you want to. And then again, just stitch straight down to lock the, the hem in place. And a little back stitch. So now you've created a nice tidy hem on the short ends of this long strip. So now you're right, we're ready to assemble the little bags. We're ready to put it all together. So the way to assemble the bag is first you wanna fold this long strip in half so that it goes from three inches to about one and a half inch. And again, just a little finger press to help, help it stay folded. And then you need to turn one of your um, little pouches wrong side out and leave the other one right side out. And you're gonna put the right side out pouch inside the wrong side out pouch. And you want to make sure that your pouch has batting on both sides. So whichever side um, has the batting on the outer layer, you wanna put the inner layer, layer batting on the opposite side. So that way there's batting all the way around your pouch, okay? And line up those side seams nicely with each other. And you probably wanna put a pin there. And then repeat that on the other side. So line up those side seams and Get a pin in there 
and make sure that your corners are all pushed out and lined up too. All right, so once those side seams are pinned together, we are ready to get our drawstring casing inserted. And the way we're gonna do that is first, we're gonna find the center point on our casing. So we wanna fold it in half and find that center point. So just finger press that center so you know exactly where the middle is. And then I'm gonna just put a teeny little mark down by the bottom raw edge of the drawstring casing, and that is my middle point, okay? Now I wanna line up this middle point with one of the side seams on my little pouch. It doesn't matter which one. So I'm gonna take out this pin, and I'm gonna put my casing upside down so that the folded edge is pointing towards the bottom of my pouch. And I want that mark that I just made at the center to line up with the side seam on both layers of the pouch. Okay, so I'm sort of sandwiching it right in between those um, side seams. And then go ahead and get a pin in there. So now the casing is sort of trapped in between these layers. And it's going in between the pretty sides of the fabric. Now go ahead and get it in between the pouch, sort of all the way around, making sure to smooth out the fabric as you slide it in between there. So you're smoothing out the fabric and you're lining up these raw edges as best you can and get another pin in here. And then again, on the very end of the casing where we have that nice hem, make sure the fabric is laying flat, make sure those raw edges are aligned with each other and go ahead and get another pin there. Now come around to the other side of the casing and get that in between the pretty layers of fabric. So it's right in between there and get another pin in here and then one more pin near the hem. So the very the other end of the casing has a hem as well, so you want to get another pin near that end. Okay. So our little pouch is pinned up all the way around, and now we are ready to sew. So the way we're going to stitch this is all the way around but leaving an opening on one of the sides of about two or three inches so that we can turn this whole thing right side out. And I find the easiest way to sew a small thing like this is to just sort of kind of manhandle it a little bit and get this raw edge only under your presser foot. Okay. And then lower that presser foot and make sure that you're only stitching through one side of your pouch. So you kind of have to squish this other this other side around a bit, and we're going to use about a, a half inch or three eighths inch seam allowance here. And we're going to go forward and then backwards. We're going to do a little back stitch there, and then just go all the way around and take your time. And as you your bag needs to turn, just sort of reposition the bag so you have a little straight, a little straight section to, to cover here and as you run out of straight section just stop and reposition your bag pull that pin out okay and again I'm sort of repositioning the bag as I sew so I'm always working with at least a couple of inches of straight line here And I always try to take my pins out before I get to them. I don't, I don't like to sew over the pins, just in case. Okay. And you can adjust your raw edge as you sew so that you're making sure that all the layers are still lined up nicely with each other. Okay, and I can see where I started my stitches. I don't know how well that shows up on the camera. This is where I started. So I'm gonna stop about two or three inches away from there. Which is coming up real soon. Okay. 
okay. And I'm gonna do a back stitch. Okay, so I've stitched around most of the top edge of the pouch, leaving this section open so I can turn the whole thing right side out. And I always like to double check that I caught all the layers of fabric in my seam. And it looks like I did. Yay! All right, so the next step is to um, find your opening and pull your pouch right side out. So just give it a tug. And you want to be kind of gentle because you know, you don't have a huge opening to work with here. So take your time and get this little guy turned around so that all of the raw edges are now on the inside and all you can see is the pretty fabric, okay? And you can kind of get your fingers in there to push those corners out. So it looks like this. And next, you're going to tuck one layer to the inside. So you can decide if you want one to be the inner layer and one to be the outer layer. It doesn't really matter because this is actually reversible. There's no raw edges, so you could flip it around some days. This is your outside. I love this fabric. And some days this is your outside. So it doesn't really matter, but go ahead and push one to the inside for now. And the, the next step, the almost last step, is that we are going to do a top stitch all the way around this, this edge where your pouch meets this drawstring casing so that we can close up the opening, but also so we can give it kind of a finished look. So you wanna go around your seam, your top seam here, and make sure that it's laying nice and flat. If you have a sleeve board for ironing, you could put this on the skinny arm of your sleeve board and um, really press that seam out nicely. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that before we top stitch. Okay, so this is my sleeve board, and I'm just putting the pouch over this narrow end, and then I'm going to take my iron and just press that edge so that it lays nice and flat. I'm gonna be especially mindful of my opening, so I wanna make sure that the fabric lays nicely at that opening that we still need to close. And then just go ahead and turn your pouch around over here. Give it a little press and it's just going to make it easier to sew. And press it there and press it there. Okay, so we've pressed all the way around and now we're ready to stitch it up. If you know that you are going to be looking at one side of your fabric more than the other, like this is going to be the outer most of the time and this will usually just be the inner layer. Um, turn it so that the outer layer is on the inside. So turn it right side out. Now, if you are going to be doing it, you know, you don't know, and you'll probably mix it up all the time. You don't have to do this. But if you know, for example, that you want this blueprint to always kind of be on the outside, turn your pouch like that. And now we're going to stick it under the presser foot again, like we did in that last step. Okay and we are going to stitch along this edge right where the fabric meets the drawstring casing with about an eighth of an inch seam allowance and especially making sure that we're getting that opening. So remember we have a little opening to close. So I'm gonna start there. And just like when we were stitching the top raw edges, you're kind of holding the bag out of the way and slowly going around the top edge of the bag. And 
And when you run out of straight area, just reposition your bag and continue taking your time. And again, just reposition as you sew. And again. Again, if your machine has speed control, you could turn it down for this part so that you don't make any errors here. Okay, almost there. We are getting back to our original line of stitches, so we're going to go over that with just a couple stitches, and then back just a couple, and then you're done. Cut your threads, and there you can see that's where I started and that's where I stopped. I just did a couple of back stitches there and I went all the way around the pouch. So now we can turn it again, right side out and get your scissors and cut off all your loose threads. So the very last step to finishing your little pouch is to get your cord, it should be about 16 inches. And um, normally I would use a safety pin. I can't find my safety pins right now. So I also have this cool um, drawstring threader tool, but basically it's you use your safety pin or whatever tool you have, grab the end of your cord or ribbon with your safety pin or your threader and just thread it through the casing all the way around until it comes out the other side. And then you're going to want to tie a knot here in your threads. Tie your knot kind of close to the end. And if this is tricky, you can use a larger piece of ribbon too, but you, you're going to want to tie that knot kind of close to the end. And then your little mason jar bag is done. It's so adorable. I hope you had a lot of fun making one of these mason jar bags with me. It's just a great way to keep a mason jar with you for all of your zero waste on the go needs. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the No Trace channel. I put out a new video every week with zero waste sewing tutorials and zero waste living tips. So I'll see you again very soon.